Today's episode of The Mom Game is brought to you by our friends at Gateway Buick GMC at LBJ and Jupiter. I know that buying a car can be stressful, but not at Gateway because their slogan is Gateways Got It. And just what does that mean? Well, it means Gateway's got a wide selection of new Buicks, GMCs, and GM certified used vehicles, all competitively priced. Gateways got it. In these busy times, you want a car dealer who makes things easy and convenient. Well, guess what? Gateways got it. When you log on to gatewaybuickgmc.com, look for the shop, click, drive button. This allows you to shop from the comfort of your home, and who doesn't want that? In fact, it's as easy as one, two, three. One, select your vehicle. Two, create your offer. Three, schedule your delivery. And on top of all this, Gateway Buick GMC offers complimentary car washes, for life. So when you want a dealer who has it all, Gateways got it. You can find them in person or no, find them online first at gatewaybuickgmc.com and then shop in person at LBJ and Jupiter. GMC, we are professional grade. Experience the new Buick. And welcome to episode 98 of The Mom Game. We're 98. 98. We're 98. Two shows away from 100. The big 100. We've been trying to get a lot of big names on the show and striking out a lot. Are you? Um, Are we? Well, it's not necessarily like strikeouts. It's people I, ghosting. It's Or crickets. Because mm-hmm. I feel like ghost is when you at least make an appearance and then go away. Oh. Like, I'm just sending out text messages and emails <laughs> and like... It's like chirp, 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 chirp. I don't know if we have any cricket sound effects, but it's crickets. But meaning- crickets make a noise. So wouldn't that mean that they're making some sort of noise? No. No. If, if, have you not ever heard the term crickets? No, I have. I have. Oh, okay. I'm just being very literal with it. Um, trying to decide if this is ghosts or crickets that uh, we're getting. Yeah. I, to me, it's, to me, I, I've just always said if someone's not yeah. responding to you, it's crickets. Yeah. Um. So I'm not prepared to enter ghost into my uh terminology at this point in time, but okay, that's fine. Um, acceptable. I could be convinced otherwise. Um, so yeah, so we'll, we'll see. get it figured out. Yeah. If not, I mean, we'll just get like hammered. Um, that'll be entertaining. I don't think that's a good idea. Oh, uh, well, I mean, I have to remember I drive all the way from Fort Worth to get here. Uh, so well, me, we can play in a sleepover. Get, uh, yeah, that. <laughs> or we'll just stay here for like two hours. Sure. To sober up. I'll put you in like a corner where you can not drink for two hours. Or and we then, could just Uber. Right. Um, oh, that too. Yeah. There. Yeah. If I have more than two drinks, I don't drive. It is. Well, that's a good plan. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and I don't advise getting hammered on oh the my show. God. Okay. Oh just, my gosh. <laughs> Okay. I was, was just that was joking. I being was I being ridic- was I being ri- oh, we're ri- back here. ridiculous? We're back no, here. I want to talk about it. I can't wait. I've been waiting for this. <gasps> really? Okay. Yes. All right. Um the whole blinds fall out. Yeah, there's been a lot of fallout. Um there hasn't been hardly any fallout. I know. But it did make me laugh because you know what it is? First of all, you're my sister. Okay. You're like the sweet, nice one uh-huh. that only that only shows people the sweet nice. She's always sweet, so nice. And v- Quite honestly, though, my sister, she's that way all the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's kind of annoying. You, I think you've got a Ooh. little bit of streak in you. <laughs> maybe I'm wrong or maybe I've seen it before. Um, <laughs> so I'm just so you're like my sister. Also, too, I've been in a clubhouse for 15 years. Yeah. So that this is just how I am. You don't have to defend yourself. I, I definitely am not. Yeah. But I feel it's like I, I can handle it. Can you let me finish fucking oh, talking? Okay. I'm trying to be nice. I, oh, see. Okay. We go okay. Again. Okay. It's me, Julie, trying to be no, nice. No, I'm trying to agree with you. Right. <sighs> okay. Let's move on. I'm done. I I, it's, I had this whole thing I was going to say. No, and, say it. Say but it. I can't even say it say because it. you're just too busy being. You're, okay. Poor I'm, Julie. No, I'm no, so no. mean. Okay. I'm so mean. I'm not saying anything. No. Let's talk about the playoffs. Great, great what games playoffs? this weekend. Let's talk about playoffs. Uh, the playoffs. Football playoffs. Okay. That are going on, like the best weekend of football we've had in 800 yeah, no, years. It was really good. Yeah, it was awesome. It sucked that the Cowboys awesome. weren't a part I, of it. I want you to finish your thought. I don't want. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I'm oh done. My God. I'm over it. Um, let's talk about the overtime rules. Okay. Yeah. So, what do you think? Uh, should Buffalo have gotten to touch the ball? This is the hot topic right now I in the know. sports world. Uh, yeah, of course they should have gotten to touch How the ball. How can we fix it? It was stupid. So I, f- I, I, should, I, f- I feel like I failed us. I feel like we both should have had our overtime plans ready mm. to go for today because I feel like people bitch about something, but they don't have a solution. 
Um, so I'm bitching about the overtime. When role, did it change to what it is now? It's been a few years. Yeah. Um, I hate it. It's, I mean, I've hated it, whether it was well, the scenario we just saw play out Sunday night or not. It just doesn't make sense to me. I, like, how can you put that much into a coin flip? I did look, well, the, the fact that you have to score a touchdown does make it a little, it's not like the per, first person to score wins. Mm -hmm. They have to score a touchdown. Mm -hmm. So they had to score a touchdown. But like, if you look at those offenses in the last two minutes of that game, um, everyone was scoring touchdowns really quickly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know what the solution is, but you can't, you can't give them each one possession because mm -hmm. if you give the first team possession and then they go out and score a touchdown, well, then the second team is going to go for it on fourth down every time. Mm -hmm. Right. Cause because you have, to score. Cause you have to, you have to score a touchdown to, win, to tie the game or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't hashed through the details of how to fix it necessarily, but I like watching college football. I like the way it ends in college football. Yeah, I, I like, like the way it ends in hockey. I like, yeah. you know, the sudden death three on three overtime. Um, I like the way it ends in baseball. It kind of seems like everyone else has figured it out, but the NFL and there's different options. I think anything outside of what they're doing, you just have to give each team a chance to touch the ball in overtime or to me, it doesn't feel fair. Right. And you have to give them the same opportunity. Yeah. Cause like the, the just one possession each doesn't, that, that's, that's not fair. That doesn't. Yeah. That seems weird too. Um, I don't know. That was like such a fun game though. Oh, and it so was fun. funny because the whole weekend was amazing. Yeah, it was every game. It, so <laughs> I was thinking about this this morning. Like, so in my old, old age slash like mom tiredness slash all the crap we have to do with the kids and blah, 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 blah. Like I have a, this amount of space in my life for like, for extracurriculers or for watching anything on TV. Right. Okay. So I have this like process where it's like, okay, who's playing today? What sport is it? How much do I care? Is it NFL playoffs? Yes. So then if I, if it makes it past like that first barrier, I'm like, how do I find it on TV? <laughs> Cause that's a whole nother yeah. thing. NFL playoffs are easy, right? They're on the main channels, but a lot of times it's like, okay, where do I go find this? So I track it down. I'm like, NFL playoffs, I'm going to have these on all day. But then it's like, do I actually sit there and watch this whole game and not move? Because I've got a million other things to do, right? I've got like, you know, all the shit that we have to do, especially on a weekend, on a Sunday. It's like your day to get stuff done. Um, and so then it, if it keeps me there, if it's a good enough game, I sit there and watch it. And then if it's a good enough game, I will sit there and, you know, stay for the whole overtime and everything else. And that's what I ended up doing for this one. I didn't get to that point though. I will say till like the fourth quarter of every single game, it was like, okay, this is good. This is good. I've got to go do this. I've got to go do that. I've got to go cut a clip for the mom game about Emily and me fighting and find an old picture of blinds and put it on. So I did now. that. So I did that during the game. And the then it was like, won't die. I know. And then it was like, Oh, I got to go back. I got to go back and watch the end of this game every single time, four times in a row. It took me, to this point um, of just, you know, okay, this is important enough to to deal with and to watch. And they were all, it was like, you didn't think that the same thing could happen again in each game to where they yeah, were like walk-off field goals. Well, especially when the weekend before was so kind of such a dud. There was like one good game and that was it. Mm -hmm. So it was nice to see now probably championship weekend's going to suck. I don't know. I, don't know I feel like there's something, something in the air right now. But the other thing with that game, it was like, I feel like I'm... You know, if you tell me who are you going for um, in that game, I'm saying the Chiefs for sure. For whatever reason, I like Mahomes. I like the Chiefs. I went to school in Missouri. But as the game went on, I almost started to go more for Buffalo. It was like in seeing Josh Allen and just how good he is and how he's the one that he hasn't won at all. And, yeah. and he's outplaying what anybody ever expected of him. It was like my, my mindset shifted during the game. I was like, wait a second. I want them to win. And then, then they didn't even get a chance to attempt yeah, in he's, overtime. He's, he's, he's a stud. Yeah. I mean, he runs like a running back and he throws the ball. Like the dude's got a cannon on his arm. Yeah. Like he's un unbelievable. Right. Uh, yeah. I'm a huge fan of Josh. So Allen. were you going for the chiefs though? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <coughs> excuse me, just because of Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. Henry's a huge fan of the chiefs. Um, did you see the fallout from Pat Mahomes' wife, Brittany, spraying no. champagne all over the fans? No. From her no, suite but she above. Is, she is omnipresent, isn't um, she? Yeah, and his brother. Uh-huh. Oh, um, well, even more so. Yes, for sure. Um, so anyway, they, I, I mean, and on one hand, I see like 
probably not appropriate to like just unsolicited throw sh- or, you know, what'd she do? So she sprayed, sprayed everybody? champagne on the people in front of her after they won. Um, but also too, like she has to feel like, and a, a lot of these people do. And a lot of people are much more in the spotlight mm-hmm. voluntarily. Um, but you know, she, her, every move is getting analyzed and overanalyzed. Mm-hmm. Um, same way with like, if you think about like Dak Prescott's brother, Tad, but like at some point as a family member, if, if oh you're the gosh, athlete, Tad. do you say like, let's bring it Tone on, it down. bring it on back. But because, you know, I, you look right. at it with Pat Mahomes and you know, Brittany's, you know, she, I, it, it seems a look like from Instagram, she's down there before every game. So is Jackson, his yeah. brother and, you know, doing the TikTok videos mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I guess good on Pat for not being like, you know, shut it down. This is my show that I'm running it. Y'all need to take it back. Jackson seat, Mahomes whatever has made something of it. He's right. like got a job now, which is doing whatever that is. Right. Exactly. And so I don't know. It's, it's just such a strange time. And I know when I talk to like our minor league players about social media and stuff, and I tell them like, it's not, this isn't, these messages aren't just for you. Like they're for your family too. Because once you become a high profile player, once you're starting, you get into the big leagues, people are crazy. They start looking at who you follow and put dots together and figure out who your siblings are and your parents. And it's crazy. It's a crazy, crazy world. uh, So what were there some Karens that were mad about getting champagne on them? Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, I I mean, I just saw, I saw a story on TMZ. Okay. So they were upset about it. uh And that's the thing too, where it's like, you wonder too about those people. If it had just been some random person spraying champagne, they probably wouldn't have or or vice versa. You're in Kansas city. If it's some random person, you get pissed. If it's Brittany Mahomes, you're like, Hey, we just celebrated with the starting quarterback's wife. I don't know. It's I don't just, know either. There's this information is so readily available and it's, half of it's not true and it's so confusing yeah. and you're just trying to navigate your way and through life. And that's super jelly of people that get to celebrate their teams right now doing anything. Very true because it is definitely. <laughs> like, man, that looks like fun. Not my, happening. My girlfriends from Mizzou were saying there were fireworks like up and down the streets in Kansas City and yeah. they all have their kids and all their gear and everybody's all pumped up. I'm like, my kids are missing out. Although yeah. I will say Ryder watched that whole game. He stayed up late. And he's like a new football fan. Like, I think he's learning that it's like cool, right? To be a fan of football. So he's trying to figure it out and like the proper steps. And during that game, he looked at me. I think he was going for the Chiefs because I told him that's who I would be going for. Um, In the past, that's usually who we go for. And he looked at me and he said, Mom, if the Chiefs, this was at the end, if the Chiefs score, I'm going to take my shirt off. (laughs) Oh, stop it. (laughs) My six-year-old. That's awesome. Yeah. Did he do it? It was so cute. No, he didn't actually. I think he must have forgotten, but he's like trying to, trying so hard to like be a fan, you know, it's really cute. I'm going to take my shirt off and paint my chest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And the Packers are out too, which remember when we talked about it a little bit, I think I I kind of, I said that I was looking forward to that game that the 49ers I thought were really good. And had a chance against the Packers. And you, like a lot of people, were saying, well, Aaron, it's Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. He's not going to lose. Um, and he did. And then he went all HSOE on the president and vaccines and everything oh, else. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah. Oh, great. I mean, awesome. because the dumb media asks him, I'm sure. Right. He's not just like, hey, let me tell you about vaccines right. after this terrible loss, loss that could be the end of my God, tenure. I'm so in Green tired Bay. of vaccine talk and it's anything COVID, COVID related. It's, I'm so over it. So I'm so over I heard it. a rumor that there was some sort of like maybe end in sight and like April ish. It's supposed to, it, the, the pie charts and the graphs are all looking yeah, apparently like. Apparently we've peaked or something. Yeah. There's been a peak. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I don't know. We've all lost our damn minds. We have. That's pretty much all we can say at this point. Collectively. Yep. We're all trying our hardest. Um, we do have a guest coming up, which is super, super exciting. Um, super excited for yeah, this guest. Steven Johns, who mm-hmm. is a former Dallas star. Mm-hmm. Friend of yours. Yeah, he's got a wonderful story to tell that I've been wanting him to tell our audience, and this was the perfect time for him to do it. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I can't wait to meet him. I'm super stoked to hear more about his story. I've obviously seen some of it on like the yeah. the, the, the gram um, and kind of what he's done, but he's a really, really, really cool story. Mm-hmm. Um, before we get to him, we have got some sponsors to We thank. do. I'll talk about Baylor, Scott and White. First, we're so thankful for their ongoing partnership here on the mom game. Um, January right now, 
voting is open to vote for Baylor Scott and White as your best place to have a baby. That is where Ryder, my son, came into the world. Baylor downtown and Emily's kids did too at All Saints. Uh -huh. All in Saints, Fort Worth. Baylor All Saints. Yep. Baylor All Saints. And we both had wonderful experiences there. Um, Baylor wants you to... A, have your baby there. B, vote for them um, for this prestigious award. Best place to have a baby. They've delivered a million first moments all in preparation for yours. Vote for Baylor Scott and White, Fort Worth Andrews Women's Hospital and DFW Child's Annual Best for Families, Moms and Babies Reader Survey. DFW Child having that survey ongoing right now. Baylor's ready for your big moment and everything leading up to it. You can talk about how... Um, they made your big moment a safe, happy, and healthy one. From ultrasounds to delivery and beyond, the experienced care team at Baylor, Scott & White, Fort Worth Andrews Women's Hospital is here to support you every moment of the way. It's kind of a big deal when you're about to have a baby to figure out where you want to do it. Um, so just know that Emily and I loved them, and they had uh, did a wonderful job with both of our babies and uh, pregnancies and births. Vote for Baylor as the best place to have a baby. BSWHealth.com backslash vote for BSWH. And when you're done having babies, you need some alcohol to sure. go. And we are in the business of making things easy in that department. And so is Bottle Rover, your go-to alcohol delivery app. So we've talked about this the last couple of weeks on the show. I wanna tell people how to use it. So go to bottlerover.com or download the app available on iOS or Android. Search your favorite beer, wine, or spirits from hundreds of local stores across the country. Shop their live inventories and then add the favorites, your favorites, to your cart. Then schedule your order for pickup or delivery then, wait for it, it arrives at your house. If you schedule a delivery, then you pour a glass and enjoys. Free delivery on orders of $35 of or more. Uh, bottle Rover, sit, stay, drink. Get it? Sit, mm -hmm. stay, drink. Bottle Rover. Dog alcohol stuff. on demand. Dog stuff. Very, very, very apropos for Julie and her new puppy motherhood. Yep. Bottle Rover, check it out. Sit, stay, drink. And now we are so excited to be joined by our friend here on The Mom Game, somebody I've known now for quite a while, Stephen Johns, former Dallas Stars defenseman. Stephen, thank you so much for coming in here today. Thanks for having me. It's uh, it's great to see you again, Julie, and uh, it's great to be here, and thanks for having me on. Of course. it's It's been a while. A lot has happened. Um, I'm trying to think of the last time that I really saw you. It was probably after, you know, you were still, you hadn't, been playing for a little bit, but you were still with the team and you were trying to see if you could get back out on the ice um, because you were a really big part of this Dallas Stars team and the def the decor. Um, so if you can, <laughs> I don't even know how to ask you to catch us up from that point on, but let's go back to your playing days um, and kind of how everything unfolded for you at that point. There was a, a, a big hit, and essentially you were never the same after that. Is that is that fair to say? Yeah, so my whole career I played the physical bruiser, you know, why everyone goes to a hockey game to watch the, the big hits and fights and stuff. And um, had a, had three concussions in the span of a couple months, and uh, November through February of 2018, 17, 18, and um, just – the last hit that got me it just never really recovered from it and um, spent three years trying to make it back and uh, just wasn't able to. So I, I feel like, you know, like you said, you know, it's a part of of the game. But it, when you're kind of in that moment, when you're at an NHL player and this has probably been your lifelong dream, how far back in your mind does that go because you don't want to think about the possibility of something bad happening like this yeah I mean honestly we're aware I, I was aware of it through my whole career um I tell people I during the national anthem I always took like 10 seconds of myself and I'm not religious or I, I wasn't like praying but I would just say to myself just get through this game healthy like every single game from when I was in college to wow. my last game was during the national anthem it's so we sign up for it. You know, it's, it's one of those things that we know the risks that, that are involved, but, um, living through it now, I wish I would have looked at it differently, but yeah. it's kind of hard to go back. And when you're so in it and just love it so much and, you know, you're getting paid to do something you truly, truly love. And, um, I would just, I just tried to do whatever I could to 
keep that for as long as possible. Mm -hmm. And can you take us through, okay, so, so when was that, that hit just so we have like a, a timeline? Yeah, I think it was March 27th or 28th of 2018. Of 2018. And so at that point you, you were, you know, you get hit a lot in hockey, you hit people a lot in hockey, but you knew at this point that this was a little bit different. Can you take us through what all you tried to do? Because I know even that point was such a trying time for you, um, where you just want to get back out there and skate. And, and you think probably, Hey, I just, if I keep trying, this will work, this will come back to me. And this pain is going to go away. And it didn't not to put you back in that place, but if you can just take us through how hard that was to kind of figure out exactly what was going on with your body and if you'd ever be able to play again. Yeah, that's the thing with chronic pain. Um, you don't really know how you feel um, months or you know years down the road. Um, I mean, we tried everything. I went to probably 10 or 15 of the top neurologists in the country, um, spent weeks in different clinics, just trying to reset my brain and um, trying to do anything to get the headaches away. And at that point it was, let's just get the headaches all gone. You know, mm -hmm. that's the only thing we were worried about. If the headaches are gone, um, everything's fine. But in that span of time, the only thing I focused on was my headaches and I just left my mental health in the rear view mirror. Mm -hmm. And that kind of just spiraled out of control and all of a sudden we're three years later and um, my headaches are worse, my, everything else is worse. It's uh, I made it. I had to make a decision in, a, in, a, in, a, in the middle of a game, in the middle of a playoff game. Wow. And it, um, I just couldn't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. So when you said your your mental health took a you know took a back seat, and it, how how did that unfold for you? Uh, well, first it was oh, the pandemic didn't help uh, yeah. in, in anything. I mean that that it, it that hit like right in the core of um, of, of my struggles and um, you know it, so many doctors tried so many different things and nothing helped and nothing worked. So I kind of just gave up on that. And then I relied on my girlfriend to pretty much do everything for me. And that, that was pretty much the downfall of, of everything. And, um, just became, I just started self isolating before the pandemic and uh, I would sit in a dark room and I would show up to games and watch the games and, and pretend I was in a good mood and feeling better. But really mm. I was just, uh, like it, 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 I could barely watch the games from the press box because the lights were so bright and uh, the sounds were so loud. So it was uh, it was definitely a tough three years, but you know, we all go through our things. And yeah, and, um, um, we actually had Drew Robinson here on the show, and I'm sure you're familiar with his story and and everything that he's been through. And something we talked about with him that I feel like pertains to the situation too. It's just interesting because I feel like people don't realized what all professional athletes are dealing with and what they're going through. And especially after an injury, whether it's a, an injury that never goes away or something that takes you away from the team for two months, right? If you have yeah. surgery and you're recovering, you go from being with the team day in, day out, like celebrating a big win, feeling the, a tough loss, um, to just going and kind of, you stay in your little room here. You don't get to go out and skate. You don't get to be a part of the team. How much of a factor was that for you from being in the middle of everything to not only dealing with your mental health and what you're going through, but not getting to be with the guys. Yeah. Um, I spent 76 nights in the bubble and didn't play. I played one game. So that was the bubble's a terrible place yeah, to begin with. Yeah, that was, that was, um, um, you know, you miss everything about it. You, and especially in hockey, you, you don't want to be a distraction to your team. Yeah especially, you know, in my situation, nobody knew what was going on. I mean, I didn't even know what was going on. It's like, oh, you, you can't play with a headache? And it's like, well, it's a little more than that. But it's tough to tell people that because you're not walking around the rink in a sling or you right. don't have a boot on your foot. And, right. Um, so that, that really that really screws with, you. It screwed with me mentally, just yeah. not, not being able to, like, explain um, anything. And um, so, yeah, like, when you're injured, you're, you're at the rink before the team. Um, you don't really want to get in the way of their routines, so... I would show up really early to the rink and, and work out and try to get out of there before any of the guys showed up. And pretty much my only interaction with like other humans was um, at at home um, at home games. Yeah, I'd yeah. Sit in the press box and be sad. And <laughs> don't you feel like to? I mean, professional sports as a whole, there's a t tremendous amount of pressure on athletes, all that kind of stuff. But as far as the the tough guy image, I mean, hockey. <laughs> I mean, yeah. there's no there's no 
tougher sport. I mean, yeah. it, you know, football's up there, obviously, but you're talking about playing 82 games, like just getting crushed and crushing guys night in and night out. How much of a part of that played into your inability or your your lack of your unwillingness to talk about it because yeah. you, it's just not, it's not part of it. And what we asked Drew the same thing, like, what do we do to fix this? Like, what do we do to, you know, to make sure that it's okay to, you know, talk about yeah. shit yeah. like this, yeah. you know what I mean? It's such a hard, it's such a hard question to answer because I remember I, the day before I was going to play my first game in Pittsburgh, which is where I'm from. And and my whole town was going to be there. I Womp em. Yeah, I got a. I had a nasty concussion literally the night before in Detroit, um, and I mm. remember just there's no way I'm not playing this game tomorrow. Oh gosh, you know. So, and I remember barely even getting getting through the morning skate. I had a full bubble on because I had a broken nose, and I just uh, yeah, that's the thing about our sport. It's it's more fun to play injured, honestly, and like. You put you play better injured because you have uh, it's some sort of chip on yeah, your shoulder like, or trying yeah, to prove yourself. Or. It's it's one of those things in sports. It's you can criticize that way of thinking, but that's what makes sports sports too, right? In a, in a sense, so it's I've just been able to have conversations like this. Um, I was never in a com- in a position where I felt comfortable having a conversation with my teammates about you know having suicidal thoughts and. Um, just all the darkness that I was experiencing. That was, mm-hmm. it's hard to tell someone like that. And then they go and about go on about their lives. And mm-hmm. right. yeah, it's, it's tough. So since they've all, it's all come to light, like with the team and with the guys and your friends, um, how have they kind of received it and been there for you throughout this all? Are you able to kind of keep that loop of communication going? Yeah, it's, yeah, I mean, obviously, whenever the, you know, Sean's article came out about about everything that, that I was really struggling with and, um, you know, almost all my teammates from Dallas to every guy I played with in the minors to college reached out to me and just like, you know, so yeah. that was, yeah, that was pretty awesome. And just showing the, the, the closeness of the hockey community and how tight knit we are and. But yeah, there's some things that we need to change. What was the turning point moment for you where it's like, I, I've slid down this slope so far that I, I've got to do something drastic to get myself out of it? Or was it more of a gradual process? Um, yeah, there's definitely some like really, really low, low moments. Uh, I don't want to get like too. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Whatever yeah. you're comfortable with. Um, but you can probably, you can probably imagine where, where that went. Um, but yeah, just. Before this rollerblading trip, I was spiraling out of control and uh, came across this YouTube video and made me want to go do this. He walked across the country to prove to himself that he was still alive. So uh, I was pretty. I was oh, wow. Pretty, uh, do, you, uh, do you know who it is? Like, have yeah, you reached Mike, out to yeah, him? Yeah, Mike Posner is like okay. a famous uh, artist. But yeah. I reached out to him, but I haven't heard anything back. But hopefully I can show him my documentary and be like, this is what you did for me. It's really cool. And, yeah. But, wow. Because me in that moment, yeah, it literally changed my life. And I texted Totes. I was like, let's go and I'm, I want to roll away across America. And he said, I'm down. And we left five days later. All right, let's get let's get into let's it. Let's get into yeah. it. Because first it of looks all, amazing. <laughs> first of all, I just want to say, because I haven't seen you, but like reading the story, hearing the story, I think it weighed, I mean, it weighed on me. I, I mean, I know you, but not like a lot of people know you. And it weighed on me. And then all of a sudden it was like, boom, look what he's doing. Look what he's doing with this situation. He took something the lowest point of his life and thought about it, figured out how I can spin this to affect other people and myself. And I'm just so incredibly proud of you. And I know so many people are. Um, so I just have to say that, but yeah, so that from that, that moment, I guess, where you texted totes and you said, I want to rollerblade across the country. And we have to explain who totes is. Cause I don't think people, <laughs> you're right. Most people watching probably don't right. know who totes is. Okay. Who's totes. So, so you Jeff, can explain so, yeah, your totes. So, so Jeff totes. He was the, the videographer for the stars, uh, my entire career there. Obviously very, very good friends with Julie too. So yeah, I like to say um, I trained him. I yeah. taught him everything he knew, okay. but I, not really. He yeah, helped was, me with stars insider. Then he ran off into doing all these amazing things, but it was perfect timing. Cause he just taken a new job. So he had like this three month gap and, um, it was perfect. He came with me and we had like one deadline where we had to get to the coast by this day. Cause he 
had to live his life and make make money again. <laughs> right. Get, get, a, get a job. So. And y'all had become pretty close <laughs> oh, yeah, as I mean, he was traveling around with the team. Yeah. Well, I mean, and it's funny, too, is we talk now and it's like, man, I wish we would have been closer whenever yeah. we were, you know, because we, especially in the bubble, you know, and stuff like that. Um, so was that yeah. was a, 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 a true best friend, though? Yeah, that's amazing. Was it hard to put that text out there? Like, were you like... What's no. he going to think of this? Are you? No, because I was honestly, I was going either way. I was probably just going to make it to the Ohio line. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, I was, I was going to go. Um, but yeah, he said, he's like, yeah, we'll document it and we'll tell your story. That's awesome. Okay. So from that point on, once you got his like verbal commitment, how did this all work? Because it's a very elaborate plan. It's an elaborate process of everything you were able to do. Was it, what did you guys draw out? Okay, we're going to do this. We're going to do he- this. We're going to stay here. Or did you just say like, I'm putting on my rollerblades and let's see what happens. We literally zoomed in on Google maps and oh said, gosh. this road looks good. Let's drive up to it. <laughs> it goes West for five miles. That's literally what we did across America. Okay. So where'd you start? Where'd you go? Where'd yeah. you finish? So we started in my driveway, Western Pennsylvania, uh, about 45 minutes North of Pittsburgh and just started going West and, we got, I met a friend in Cleveland and then I was like, wait, am I, I was in, I went to Ann Arbor for the U S national program in high school. So I was like, oh, it's only an hour drive. Let's go stay the night with them. So we did that. And so you're then, just texting people like, Hey, can yeah, I Yeah, kind of like, Oh wait, looking at the maps, like, wait, we're going to roll through there. <laughs> so then we were going right that rape through Notre Dame's and I had to stop at Notre yeah. Dame. And then we went through right through Chicago, which love it. It's like it's celebrate. Yeah, Sorry it's, to cut you off. It's, it's like celebrating your life and milestones of, in your life yeah, along the way. Because for like a lot of people don't know, I was drafted by Chicago. Um, so and then from from there we go to Wisconsin and Minnesota, and that was kind of like the last uh, state that was just dead flat farmland because in South Dakota just went crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, but then that was you know, where, my, where my career ended. Well, technically where the hit was that ended my career. So. Um, It's very cool how it all comes together and then it's from that moment like when in the documentary it's just then it just gets we get into wyoming and and south dakota and it's it was just uh yeah it was amazing going 10 miles per hour rather than 70. so how long did it take you and how many miles did you log uh we don't really know i wish we would have done that from the beginning um it took us like almost a month and a half but I wasn't. I, did, I wasn't able to do every mile on, on blades. Right. So wait. I'd wake up in the morning, blade for four or five hours, eat lunch, blade for four or five more hours, and then we'd find a campsite. You listening and, to anything? What's going on? Are you just uh, taking it all in? A lot of the times. Podcasts. Yeah. What well, did you listen to? The mom, mom game. game? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We make I, the same dumb jokes. Sorry. <laughs> I listen to uh, honestly not a lot of music. I would I would start with the the five songs from Mike Posner that got me hyped up and. Um, it got me going and, um, it, there was so much talk between me and him and worrying about cars and <laughs> so there was, yeah, those cars, yeah. I forgot about the cars. So he was driving like behind you. He was driving behind me. We had a Did sign. you have like a walkie talkie? No, mean- he would just honk on the horn if there was a car coming. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, truly no planning. Just let's go, let's wing it. And, uh, yeah, well, it, was, it was epic. What was the most, okay. What was the most epic thing uh, that happened? Badlands National Park. Okay. Yeah, we saw. I just. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Yeah, I've heard of it. they did a bachelor yeah. date at the Blind Lens. <laughs> <sighs> Oh, it, was three, the, it was a three. It was like you just a see his look of disapproval <laughs> with you know, trying to bring up bachelor talk. It was right like now. where there's three girls and one guy, and he's got to weed out the girls. And it was in Badlands. It was a wonderful setting for all of the drama. Yeah, so just, yes, I'm very I familiar. Was very disappointed in that comment. He was, uh, but I know uh, where I know where it is. Yes. But I'm, but not a lot of people do, and I'm, and I'm, <laughs> I'm glad that not a lot of people do because I'm telling everybody about it. Um, yeah. Yeah, that was. It was. It was just. Okay, uh, where is it again? I was so distracted by the bachelor. It's in South concert. Dakota. South Dakota. Yeah. Okay. And it's um, just amazing. Yeah, I don't want to get into it because I kind of that's yeah. that's me. That's that's big in the documentary. Okay, and, okay. Uh, that's that's where I kind of had like my like moment. a moment. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's so cool. Yeah, it's crazy. Like an epiphany. So, I mean, the obvious question for me is like, isn't rollerblading that much really hard? Didn't you get blisters and like want to quit and honestly, did it hurt? Honestly, it was easy. I mean, not like my feet were killing me. I had blisters everywhere, but from from like a skating standpoint. Oh yeah. Because once you get rolling. Uh huh. It wasn't that hard. 
like physically, like mentally, it was more hard just to, my foot, my feet felt like they were literally going to fall yeah, off. Yeah, I'd imagine. Yeah. Any but, close calls with like cars or wildlife? <laughs> Uh, I ran into a moose and, uh, and a bison. Stop. Uh, yeah, was... A boat at the same time. <laughs> oh, no. First the moose, then the bison. They were ganging up on you. We How do you in, uh, run into a moose? So we were in uh, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and there was like this the trail that goes to the mountains. It's a paved trail. Then we ran into some an older couple that I was just talking shop with them, and they're like, yeah, but watch out for moose. And if you're on rollerblades, you don't want to mess with moose. I like, I'm not gonna Never heard moose. that before, yeah. I'm, I'm 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 blading down this, down the trail, and all of a sudden I hear this like a tree fall down next to me. Pretty much what it sounds like. I look over, the moose five feet from me. Uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah, like bull moose too, big horns. And oh, yeah, yeah. I think that, I'd be out on that. Yeah. I, well, I, I started ripping it, and then I was like, I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna go back. I took a nice little video. Did it just stay there? It didn't chase you or anything? Uh, he was looking at me. Yeah, yeah he was thinking just, about it. Yeah, but no, it was good. Were you confident you could outrun him? You think you could? No, out, was, you think you could outblade a no, moose? No, I was done. No. <laughs> no I was okay. Done. What about a buffalo? Could you outblade a buffalo? I don't think so. No. no. What was the buffalo encounter? That was in, that was in Yellowstone. So, I, bl- I rollerbladed a little bit through Yellowstone and um, found out the next day that the, all the game wardens were looking for us because you're not allowed to. Do, do things like that. Oh, really? Yeah. Oops. You almost like went to jail. No, uh, we were on like a big fine, probably. But oh. We were talking to some guys. Like, yeah, I was like, yeah, I'm rollerblading across the country. So, oh, so they, you were who they're all looking for. Yesterday. Oh, gosh. Uh, a lot of rules. Yeah. Okay. And what about the nights? Like, were you camping? Were you like building a fire and like reflecting? Or what did you do with all of those those evenings? Yeah. So, a lot of, yeah, probably a third of the time we, we camped out, a third of the time hotels, and then a third of the time. Same with buddies or just figuring it out. Um, camping was super fun, but mm-hmm. after rollerblading all day, it's really nice taking a hot shower and, and right. laying, laying, <laughs> Not in a, really in a really comfortable bed. So um, we definitely camped more in the middle of the trip, and then by the end of it, we were we were hoteling it. Uh-huh. Makes sense. Yeah. I bet the hotel felt amazing at that oh, yeah. point. Um, so so throughout this, I remember hearing about what you were doing, and then I remember, like you said, like the outpouring of people on social media how did how did I guess word get out and then what was that like for you were your all's phones blowing up as you're still trying to do this I mean and and at this point I guess too how are you handling all of that mentally because that's a lot yeah I mean I put the post on on Instagram pretty much announcing my retirement and announcing that we were going on this trip and I mean from the instant I hit send or post on that it was uh it was crazy um I think I have like 20,000 followers in two or three days wow. and just reading messages and, and seeing how much this project was going to help people was just the beginning. And then it never stopped throughout mm-hmm. the whole process. Um, seemed like every day we were, I mean, we were posting every day. So it seemed like every day it was like I had another 2000 messages to read and it was awesome. I mean, yeah, it was truly uh, a life changing thing and, and yeah. It's, it's so, awesome. so what do you want to do? I mean, obviously that the, what you did ra- raising so much awareness, opening up so many, so many conversations by you sharing your story. So what have you thought about? I mean, obviously the documentary, hopefully mm-hmm. coming soon. What next? I don't know. I think that's what this road trip's about right now that I'm on. Um, just going to keep driving out West. Uh, I was honestly found, was finding myself back in the position before my trip. Um, where I was just sitting at home doing nothing and I need to, I need to do something again. And, uh, I don't know, I want to get into the esports world. I, I have this competitive nature of me still. And, um, I really don't know where to, to like let that out at, mm-hmm. I guess. Um, so I don't know. I, I'm open to anything obviously. And I think this documentary hopefully will open up some new avenues for me. And you now I want to stay in the mental health field and be, and be an advocate for people. And, um, I think once people hear my my full story and and realize what you know what a lot of uh, professional athletes go through and and some of the things and not even professional athletes but just you know some kids that that don't even make college that, that struggle with concussions or struggle with anxiety or depression or or anything not even just an injury mm-hmm. um, I don't know I just wanted to make something where where someone could watch it and feel like they're not going through something alone. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like that, and I don't know if you can answer this question, but do you feel like 
you you dealt with these or dabbled in these issues? That's a terrible way to phrase it. But do you feel like you dealt with some of these issues before um, the concussions, or do you feel like it was a direct result, the correlation there? Yeah, no, hundred percent, hundred percent. And I think the 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 concussions just brought it to light more. Um, and no one ever really you don't really learn about depression and anxiety in high school, or at least I didn't. And I. I, I said this throughout my whole trip you know I always thought that you it was normal to be depressed after you lose a loved one or if you break up a relationship or just something tragic happens I didn't really realize that depression can really come out of nowhere mm -hmm. um and if you don't take care of it it's uh it's a really scary thing and something that nobody wants to be involved in so and uh looking back at the game of hockey how do you look at it now when yeah. do you watch it um and then my other question is like if you had a, a son, would you want him to play? No. Yeah, no. Um, but I don't regret a, th a single thing I did. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, just uh, no, yeah. That's, that's tough. And it's tough because how can you not? So. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you watch the stars? I mean. No, I watch. Uh, if I watch anything, I'll watch. Yeah, we'll watch the stars. But. Got a couple of good friends still in the league, so I'll watch throw on their games. But mm -hmm. usually, don't watch. I just I'm on my phone when I hear their name. I'll look up. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's pretty. It's pretty hard for me to watch just because how much I do miss it. Yep. Um, it's still who I am as a person. So. Mm -hmm. Have you found that athletes, other athletes, whether they be hockey players or other professional athletes or just athletes in general, have reached out to you um, as kind of a source of you know, maybe information or support or uh, something like that? Yeah, here and there. I mean, obviously not as not as much <laughs> as as you'd want um, from from other athletes, especially other sports. But I think it's different whenever you you just you do all that interaction on on social media and stuff. But then when you get in person and you talk to other professional athletes and or from other guys from other sports, like I had a great conversation yesterday with I'm not going to name names, but and he just talked about um, he played 14 years in, in, in the pros and uh, he talked to me about his you know his suicide attempt and that's crazy to, it was like a crazy conversation and we just had it literally yesterday and I guarantee you we would never have had that conversation if I wasn't so open about mine so just hearing him talk about it and you can and, and even after our conversation he's like man I feel better even after just talking about it and so that's just that's just crazy have there yeah. been any negatives to sharing uh, I mean, yeah, you get the occasional um, terrible person on Twitter that... Just, They're all terrible on Twitter. Yeah. Not all of them, Yeah, but um, it's the worst. Honestly, though, for the one negative comment I got, I got 10,000 positives. Mm -hmm. So it outweighs by millions. So. Mm -hmm. so right now you have mental miles. Mm -hmm. um, where does it stand now and where do you maybe want it to go? Because I think... You need to make it happen. Yeah, like yeah. I'll help however we can, but yeah, um, so I, it's just awesome. Yeah, no, we and we were even like, because the last three or four days of our trip, we started. We weren't we weren't excited to get to the coast. We were I was getting sad because the trip was coming to an end. Yeah, so we already like brainstorming next year. Like, oh, let's do Florida to Maine. Like, just <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I don't know. I mean, I can't. I'm not gonna be able to rollerblade across the country every year. So. Um, I do want to do something to, to still raise awareness and, and uh -huh. money every year to, to help people who are struggling because, I mean, with mental health, the number one thing is, well, you need to see a therapist. It's, for most people, it's like, well, I can't afford $250 an hour yeah, once or twice a week. And um, that's something that needs to be changed, too, because there's a lot of people out there struggling that, that don't have access to help. Mm -hmm. so. And it seems like a lot of times that physical activity can give you that mental stim stimulation that you need and make you feel better, right? And that I just love seeing like someone on their Peloton, like mental miles, Stephen Johns, you know, yeah. or out on a walk with their dog, getting in my mental miles because I wasn't feeling good today. Yeah. It's just amazing how much exercise and getting out there and getting out of your house, getting out of your room can really do for you. Yeah. And I mean, you know, Krista really well. Yeah. She told me that, you know, after after I came out, we were doing all this stuff that her and her friends like started a walking group on, on like Mondays. And now it's like the best thing they do all week. And just hearing stories like that and knowing that I had like a positive impact on people, um, 
that's 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 what I that's why I did it, you know. Um, because as a hockey player and as an athlete, I loved like the game, but I didn't I didn't play the game to to win Stanley Cups. I played the game because I loved it, and mm -hmm. I played the game to to screw with the kids on the glass of practice and mm -hmm. um, yeah, so. You're always a fan favorite, and I think even more so now, um, just with everything that you're doing. And you've got really big things ahead for you. I'm so proud of you, like I said, and just so thrilled and honored that you were able to come here today and share your story. Can't wait for this documentary. I when know. are we going to see it? Let us know when it comes out so we can yeah. tell everyone. Hopefully, we're uh, we're looking right. I mean, right now it's pretty much done. We have a couple, like one, two more audio things to figure out. But uh, we're just waiting to hear back from the NHL on on licensing stuff. And, uh -huh. Uh, trying to get some clips, but yeah, other than that, it's it's ready to go. We're just trying to figure out which platform to, if any if any platform will take it. But if if no platform picks it up, you'll you'll everybody will be seeing it for sure. So uh huh. It'll it'll get out there. Oh, I mean, it's I think any good documentary, any good show, it starts with a wonderful story, and you don't have there's no better story than yours and, and what you were able to do and then to let it all come to life in the form of your adventure rollerblading across, across the country is just amazing. So yeah. best of luck to you um, in everything. And uh, like I said, just cannot wait to see this full Netflix or Hulu or wherever it goes. Um, I've got like five subscribers on my YouTube channel. If you want to push it there. <laughs> well, we can, we I mean, can, I'm we just can, saying we can run a partnership. Like I, I mean, I'm just going to put it out These there. Local media. Have, uh, yeah. We'll figure okay. this thing out. Yes. Yeah. No, I, I well, know Steve, it's going to happen. Yeah. It was so great to meet you. Yeah, Very yeah, nice, nice to meet you. I did want to ask you before you go, like, what was Julie like around the <laughs> rink? Well, because she was, was she, was she reporting then when you were playing? Yeah. That's what I, that's, that's what I need. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> He's rubbing his hair. We go. Oh, uh, we and you know. I don't know. Oh, who's your husband? <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll just leave it at that. No, Julie was awesome. She made it very easy to. Um, I mean, we, she was friends with us first, yeah. so that makes yeah. it easier to work with somebody, especially you know, throw a lights and camera in front of somebody who's never been in front of one. And you got to feel a little bit comfortable, and she always made us feel comfortable. So, well, thank you. Very I remember um, our adventures in. Pittsburgh mm -hmm. yeah I kind of like followed him around with the camera for a whole day and he showed us around a little bit and we didn't make that. it to Wampum yeah. but your whole family came to that game which was so cool that was my last question if I have one last question is like I know you have so much family support and support back in your hometown what has that been like through all of this uh, it's literally been crazy um, yeah I come from a town of like 600 people and then the the big town over is 10,000 so <laughs> Uh, when I would play in Pittsburgh, like five, six hundred people would come. Uh, it would take me two hours after the game to say hi to everybody. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's just one of those truly like a like a small Texas town where the Friday lights were the yeah it's closed for it was like that and uh, yeah those are the games that I mean I'll never yeah those are, those are the games that yeah. I remember, yeah and is that home now like is that kind of your home base it's home right now but I mean, if anyone out there has a job that they want to i mean seriously <laughs> though you've got a lot to offer somebody so I, I like i said it's gonna happen for you and uh only going up from here on out so we're, we're so, so proud of you, for you. yes we are yeah. thank you so much thank for coming yes. in today is this the end this no is. this isn't it is the end it is the end of our it show oh so we have show. to teach you our dismount Go ahead, Jules. <laughs> so our dismount is double peace sign, and then we just say mom game out. And you look into your camera. There's mom your game right out. There. Uh huh. Yes. Ready? Same time. Very, yep. One, very elaborate. Two, three. Mom, mom game, game out. out.